Hello everyone. Welcome to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, The Health Talk Session. Surgical oncology is a field of medicine that presented rapid evolution over the past few years. Let's discuss about surgical oncology and its recent advancements. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and let's welcome surgical oncology consultant from Yashoda Hospital's Somaji Guda. Welcome, Doctor. Hi. So, Doctor, tell us more about yourself and your journey in this medical field. I'm Dr. K. Srikanth, surgical oncologist, has been associated with Yashoda Hospital since uh, 19 years. And uh, I started my journey in 1985 when I joined the medical school at uh, Karnal Medical College. In 1996, I went for my super specialty course in surgical oncology at uh, Adyar Cancer Institute, Chennai, following which I was there as assistant professor and then moved down to Hyderabad as it's been my native uh, state. And I've been here uh, with this organization for the last 19 years. Well, I think that's a long and a wonderful journey. So what made you choose oncology as your stream of specialization? Yes, that's uh, that's an interesting uh, twist which I can say in my life. My ambition was basically to become a surgeon. So that was decided or predetermined even before I joined my medical school because uh, my father was a surgeon and my mother was a practicing, uh, was a medical practitioner at my native place, which is Prozitur in Kadapa district. During my post-graduation, I think there was uh, maybe rather I, I would say an incident which uh, turned my attention or my uh, interest towards surgical oncology or oncology. Uh, one of my uh, professor's uh, daughter you know, got uh, affected with cancer and uh, somehow I was in that unit then and I did go through the, the trauma what he had faced when uh, getting his daughter treated. So I accompanied him to few hospitals in the cities here in, in Hyderabad and Chennai then I have I've seen the agony what that family went through when uh, her daughter was undergoing treatment. Somehow when I went to Adair Cancer Institute at that time, point of time accompanying him and his daughter, I, I felt I think somehow my, I fell in love with that uh, speciality basically to explore more in the field and to serve people in the, with cancer because Cancer is a disease where it really affects the family as a unit and everybody gets uh, disturbed to a large extent um, mentally, financially, psychologically. You know, every, every aspect in the family and every person in the family gets disturbed. So I thought, uh, let me pursue my career in oncology and let me see what best I can do to alleviate the trauma that a person goes through when uh, who is affected with cancer. So that's how I decided to take up uh, surgical oncology. Well, doctor, I think that's rightly said that cancer not just affects a person, but the entire family. So who was your inspiration behind your successful journey? Obviously, when it comes to who inspired me, most was my parents. So both of them were practitioners, were into the medical profession, and they were in a small place with a population of 40, 50,000 at that point of time. And uh, when I've, I saw them serving the people, and when I saw people respecting them so much, and when I saw the agony and the happiness, the patients used to, uh, the happiness patients used to show after they get, got relieved of their disease and the respect they used to give to my parents. So slowly, they never told me to become a doctor, but uh, uh, from the childhood when I start seeing the patients paying their respects to my parents and the type of service they used to see. So I, I, I maybe in that uh, tender age, it, I, I got fixed or it got fixed in my mind that you know, I should become a doctor. If you look at the person who is an inspiration behind me, uncle and a professor at Chennai, I was inspired by his surgical skills. An excellent surgeon and an excellent uh, patient counsellor and excellent uh, psychologist in the sense he can, he's a person who can read the psychology of a patient. So these are all uh, the people who actually uh, inspired me to move further and to uh, grow further. 
I think that's wonderful. So talking about medical journey, how do you think the treatment for cancer has evolved since your student days? The knowledge about cancer, the concept about cancer and then the inclination for treatment in cancer was not there. The fact those days was, okay, you are affected with cancer, that means that's the end of the road. No, you are not going to survive and ultimately you only have to wait for the deaths to come. That's how it was, the cancer used to be viewed at or looked at. So it was more of a negativism in the treatment involved uh, or in the treatment involved towards cancer at that point of time. But I think with the time from 1995 onwards, the advancements in surgery, advancements in uh, radiation techniques or radiation equipment and especially the chemotherapy drugs. So they all came almost uh, one after other in a very short period. We started uh, seeing or looking at uh, cancer patients with a lot of hope. The results of this advancement in cancer translated into a longer survival in these patients. Every year I think we keep hearing about so many molecules coming up, so many advancements coming up in uh, the radiation techniques and the surgical techniques and the more and more advancements or uh, molecules gets added up in in the medical oncology especially the chemotherapeutic drugs the targeted drugs the monoclonal antibodies uh, immunotherapeutic uh, molecules so these advancements i think will keep happening and uh, we hope at, uh, to see some time in the future where the genetic testings and then uh, managing the genetic changes can can even prevent these cancers coming up well, doctor, I think that's rightly said that hope and satisfaction are the most important aspect when it comes to cancer therapy. So on a personal note, what would you like to do when not working at the hospital? So like uh, I, my passion and my connection is to oncology, to cancer patients. So I am very, I'm, I'm off the social media generally and I'm not into watching movies or televisions. So my, when I am free, I listen to music. That's the one which gives me a lot of relief and a lot of relaxation. And then I have an organization or I have a foundation, which is an NGO, which I started on my mother's name, which is called as Vimla Foundation. So I serve or help people, needy people or poor people for the, who are affected with cancer. And also I do support a lot of children, uh, poor children, for education so I do some charity work so for senior citizens for education of children and then for poor cancer patients so these are the three things so I keep myself busy either with uh, these activities well coincidentally my mother also shares the same name that's wonderful to know about your organization so how do you think this COVID has affected the cancer care during this pandemic doctor the overcrowding of the hospitals the burden on the healthcare workers, the doctors, you know, really uh, strained the medical system to a large extent. And when it comes to cancer patients, I think they got affected worst because cancer is a disease where the treatment goes on for at least six months on average. Fortunately, as any system, we evolved a, evolved a uh, method wherein we started consulting the patients via teleconsultation where we could suggest them what can be taken. So a teleconsultation and uh, advices through teleconsultation helped some patients definitely and uh, we could uh, instill some confidence. Yeah, undoubtedly technology has definitely helped us during this pandemic to deliver cancer care. So before ending this episode, what message you would like to give to the society as a cancer care provider? Yes. Uh, especially as a cancer specialist, I would uh, suggest that this disease is basically a lifestyle disease. Most of the uh, cancers what we get are because of our lifestyle changes what we uh, adapt or lifestyle abuses what we do, except for few cancers which are genetic. So most of the things are because of most of the cancers are commonly because of smoking, alcohol, and the stress we go through, uh, poor nutritional habits, you mean to say the food habits, taking less of greens, not exercising, not sleeping properly. So I, I would say, yes, working is important, you know, profession is important, 
survival is important but i think at least we need to maintain certain discipline in our, in our daily life that's what what we lack is regular health checkups especially for the for either cardiac or for the cancer screening is very important so getting screened ourselves at regular intervals at after a certain point of age especially i would say from 45 years onwards so screening and healthy lifestyle habits are one thing which every individual should adopt at from a certain point of age and time yes doctor thank you for emphasizing on the point about regular checkups and screening thank you doctor it was wonderful talking to you thank you so this brings us to the end of this episode thank you all for watching us and do join us for the next week as well take care and stay safe